And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Everybody who's traded has gone through periods of time where their strategy hasn't worked. Where if not a hard stop, you should reevaluate the trades you're in uh, based on time. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Good morning and welcome to the Market Prep. It is Wednesday, March the 8th. My name is John Hoagland. Thanks for trusting me with your time this morning. It's going to be a challenging trading day. If you're already in the markets, you're probably not too much either direction. But uh, we're going to see if we can't find some accurate context for everybody this morning. Remind everybody to always think about risk management first and to remain patient in your trading 30-year mortgage rates up a little bit uh, this week, 6.79% after 6.71% last week. The ADP employment numbers came out at 7.15 early this morning, uh, looking for 200,000 additional private sector jobs, came out 242,000 private sector jobs created in February. Not only that, there was a, an adjustment to the January. The, the, the past one was reported January was at 106,000. It actually, they've adjusted that now to 119,000. So the jobs um, market, the labor labor market is is remaining pretty tight. And uh, you know, this is one of the things that uh, that the Fed is going to be looking at, of course. This may have implications for Friday's unemployment numbers. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see, of course, on that. We also had international trade this morning. The trade deficit dropped by a slight margin uh, over the last month. Uh, Nine o'clock today, of course, we know that Chairman Powell is going to be speaking again. He's going to be speaking at the House of Representatives, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be presenting this same exact speech Anything that happens uh, unusual may be in the question and answer session. And, and our uh, our glorious uh, politicians yesterday gave him a you know a, a rough ride of it. It is from what I've seen of it. Any some of the some of the questions I saw were uh, were almost like the politicians knew what they were talking about. Uh, we've got the job opens and labor turnovers at 9 o'clock a.m. Central this morning as well, as well as the 9.30 EIA petroleum status report. So the equity futures are pretty much hovering about even, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, and, of course, we are awaiting today's data, which we already have some of, as well as the Powell testimony in the House. Now, again, I'm not expecting to hear anything different from Chairman Powell than what he said yesterday. So the the you know jarring of the market yesterday, what he said yesterday, is probably already in the market. Of course, the question and answer session can create some some different feels and some different ideas. Uh, Canada releases its rate decision today at 9 o'clock central. They're expected not to change their current rate, which, which is, I, I believe, around 4.5%. Uh, crude prices have steadied overnight after the route to the downside yesterday. The API announced a 3.8 million barrel draw in crude stocks here in the U.S., and the EIA is anticipating basically a 400,000 barrel boost. Nothing major there. The VIX this morning up about a point higher than it was yesterday at this time, 1985. Yesterday was 1880. The dollar index up really a full point. It's 105.65 last I checked here this morning from 104.49 yesterday, and the yield on the 10-year up Ever so slightly, 3.94% after the same time for yesterday, 3.93%. So uh, rates creeping higher, perhaps. As always, 
I ask that you make sure and hit the lucky like button, share, comment, question, feedback, heckling, and love are always welcome here on the market. Prep, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want notifications when we do go live. Speaking of going live, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central, a question and answer session with Top Step CEO and founder, Michael Patak. Looking forward to seeing all of you there. I know that uh, Dan and uh, and Michael are, are thinking, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to answering all the questions you send in. Hopefully they'll get to all of them. Always a good uh, opportunity for you to ask your questions of the, the founder and CEO. Uh, th- this afternoon, we do have group coaching. I just put the link to register for group coaching today. That is at 1230. You have the opportunity to email in questions. Email in your questions early. Let me get set up for them. Other than that, questions on the fly are always Welcome and appreciated. We're going to see if we can't have a really good session in group coaching today. And then just after that at 2 o'clock Central, Make Hogue Money. The link is for the registration of the afternoon session I just put into the chat. And uh, and then after that, of course, we'll do the the uh, the market reflection. See if with what happens today and we'll see what happens, uh, what things are looking like perhaps for tomorrow. All right, so we've got the rooster crowing early this morning. First one in the room winning the prize. Shaw, good ha- good morning and happy Wednesday. Scott saw and he conquered. My brother Rick Randolph Duke, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, Nostick, Brian, John, Theo, good to see you, Theo. Terry King, Will. Alejandro, Urban Cowboy, Andy Bleed, Frank Sanchez, Kevin, good morning to you, Mr. Laffey. Uh, Will, is ADP lagging or not? Because last month there was 106,000. If it's not lagging, Friday is going to be a complete mess. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily lagging. Of course, you know, it's the 106,000 was the January number. Um, this most recent 240,000. 2000 jump in jobs is of course February. So you can say that it's lagging to some degree, but pretty much all of these indications and economic numbers are lagging to some degree. Uh, you know, Friday's unemployment is going to be about the February numbers. Um, if the ADP is indicative of what Friday is going to be like, you may be right. It may be a mess. The Fed is hoping to soften the labor market, and it doesn't seem to be doing a very good job. I guess it depends on what you're looking at. I mean, we've seen some major companies put some major layoffs out there, and we're still increasing um, private sector jobs. So who knows what's going to happen? As we often say here on the market prep, anything can happen. A-C-H. I think I'm going to have a badge created with A-C-H, the acronym, on there. Uh, good morning, Haggle Matters. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Season Rusty Golfer, my spirit animal, Anissa. Good to see you, Grounds Hero. Ainsley, good morning, George. George, Lacey is sitting on my feet or laying on my feet as we speak. She says, good morning back to you. Dark Kevin, let's go. Good to see you, Jason, Kevin. Oh, no, the gray card. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm trying something different. Uh, maybe it'll rally today. Who knows? Uh, Leslie, good morning. Jamie, Pablo, Marcelo, Vince, good morning. Anne Marie, looking for. Oh, I'm looking forward to having you with us, Anne Marie. As, as always, um, it's one of my one of my great joys in life is having the opportunity to talk to traders about trading. Uh, Shy, good morning, Orion. Good morning, trading research. Uh, yes, of course, Powell likes to see that Jolts number as well, and he'll get that while he is speaking, apparently. Uh, <laughs> JT, Dowitzer, JD, yeah, they grilled him pretty good. Uh, good morning to you, uh, everyone. And Marie is saying, uh, Travis, good morning, Joe, good morning, Keith, Stephen, Omid, 
My goodness, everybody is saying good morning this morning. I love it. Dan Trader, good morning. Mia me, or is that Miami? Good morning. Took a couple of days off and avoided yesterday. Not a bad idea. Steven, Sarah Hall, prayers and love to you. Uh, trading research, Jay, Bill Phillips, Chad, can't post the link for some reason, but here's the article, a value, RSI, a valuable tool for traders. Thank you, Chad. Anything that we can use that's going to be to our benefit, we certainly appreciate. JT, Shaw, it, it, this isn't the 70s in the gig economy. Fewer and fewer people work for one of those major companies, right? I guess that is true, huh? Uh, if we open here, we are in within regular trading hours range and inside regular trading hours, expect two-sided trade. Yes, the, the rally sweater is on, trying something different. I, you know, if that black sweater is, it means that the market's going lower, certainly an indicator that I want to be aware of. So we'll see what happens today. We've got the rally sweater on. Joe agreed, you know, if we open in range and in value, Usually tells me I need to remain patient and look for opportunities as the day goes on. But we're going to take a look at that here in the charts very shortly. Uh, we've got group coaching. We've got Make Hogue Money. Uh, we've got the CEO question and answer session tomorrow. I think I took care of all of that business. Let's take care of this business. So when I'm telling my dog to take care of business, it means something completely different. And uh, sometimes uh, she's she likes to dawdle. Um, <laughs> but we're not going to dawdle. We're going to take a look here and see what we've got going on here. So some days the market speaks to you. Some days it seems to hide from you. Today seems to be one of those days. When I look at this daily chart, you know, we, we know we've rejected the February low. We've put in a lower low here in, in March already. We've put in a lower high here already. Looking at this picture, I mean, where are we really? We're rotating. We're largely range bound. If we look at a longer time frame chart, we've been in this range for quite some time and we're relatively centrally located in it. Uh, there, were, of course, is going to be focus on the, the economic, um, the employment numbers today, and of course, they're going to we're going to be watching to see what Powell has to say. If there's anything different from yesterday, not expecting the speech to be any different at all. But again, we got to watch and see what happens with the question and answer session. Another thing, we're in rollover. Tuesday is the scheduled switch from the. March contract to the June contract around Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week, the volume will actually usurp the, the March contract in the June contract. I love hearing the June contract. It means summer's coming, but it also means the market is going to be a little bit wacky. And I think that it may have had something to do with the magnitude of the downside move we had yesterday. The longer time frame traders are more interested in getting a cheap rollover than being directional in trading. You can almost see it in the open interest change yesterday, which is estimated to be only 3,100 contracts on a move of this magnitude. We looked at the, the open interest on the upside move, and it was small. It was hollow. We mentioned it yesterday, and I think... Uh, the day before that, you know, that this this big move to the upside didn't bring in new business. It didn't bring in new business yesterday on the way down either. A lot of that, again, because of rollover. The, the volume in futures looks like it was fantastic, but in the New York Stock Exchange, for the last three sessions in a row, it's been 3.9 billion shares. No change in open interest. Here, here, uh, excuse me, no change in volume here, here, or here. So it hasn't been like there's been a spike in, vo in, in, in volume. V open interest has been largely inert, and it's all part of rollover. Okay, so the volume, again, it looks good. Anything can happen. This is uh, last week's range, the, the purple lines. We're right in the middle. 
weekly kickoff levels, relatively centrally located. Our little tennis player is moving back to the center so that if the volley comes lower, he can get it. If the volley comes higher, he can get it. It's really just centrally located, which tells me I really, I think, want to try and stay patient today. After today, the focus of these markets will be the jobless claims tomorrow, which may or may not be as as impactful, of course, as the employment numbers on Friday. So as soon as Powell's testimony is done, that's going to be ancient history to traders. Um, so... The focus, of, of course, will then be on basically unemployment and what that's going to mean to rates moving forward. How is the Fed going to respond to these numbers? They've pretty much said they're looking at higher, higher rates for longer. If the, the, um, if the employment, uh, if the labor market remains tight, they're going to go higher and they're going to keep them there longer. And that's going to keep a, a foot on the throat of stocks for, for a little while. It, it would make sense, right? All right. So it was centrally located. Here's the 30-minute chart. Hmm. No overnight inventory. A little bit of knee-jerking in, in and before the numbers here this morning. No, again, no overnight inventory. The market is right where it opened last night, pretty much right where it closed last night. We're in range, we're in value. Patience. Patience. When we look at these at these pro, these volume profiles on either side of the current market, we've got potential repair above, we've got potential repair below all the way to weekly kickoff low, which is partially based on the October low on the February low. Okay, we've got the point of control here as well. Last week's low. Where is that supposed to be? That should be here. That got moved somehow. Okay, so you know there is potential repair in both directions. I'm gonna just try and stay patient today. Uh, and see if the market will come to me and say, uh, you know, this is a short time frame level that makes sense and you can limit risk here. It's a cheap trade, John. You know, if you want to take this, it might be a good idea. What I don't want to do is I don't want to become run by emotion and impulse, which will be yelling at me saying, well, you better do something. What are you going to do? You're wasting the day. Look at all these opportunities. Look at this. Look at that. No, I'm going to be patient and wait for that intuition to whisper to me instead of listening to my impulses yell at me. Right now, I'm just going to sit. I, I don't think, you know, right now that there's a good opportunity. Maybe it's going to be at some point during the day after we've established the daily range, focusing on the extremes of that might be the opportunity that's going to come to me and say, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, Anne Marie's talking about the, the monthly chart. Uh, active. Let's see if I can get this done. Month. So here it is. There's that monthly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven months we've been in this range. We're not going anywhere. We've barely gone anywhere. Just to, just to, to point out what Anne Marie is, is saying there. We are sitting in a long time frame range. A wide range, albeit, but long time frame range. So, so let's take a look at the TPO chart and move on from this S&P chart. It's making me, it's giving me a headache today. 
So, you know, here's here's the highs. Uh, yesterday, uh, initial balance high of the session. Uh, double distribution trend day to a degree. There is some some single TPOs here. An attempt at a, at a late spike was, was thwarted. Uh, where are we? Well, we're in the lower distribution here. If we come back here and we open above a, an assumed point of control here, that'll probably put me in repair mode, which would take us up to the point of control from this upper distribution. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I, again, I'm going to stay patient. My, my goal today, just don't lose money. That's it. Simple. Just don't lose money. Maybe that's going to cause me to leave some some trades, you know, untaken. But it's the ones again that whisper to me that I'm going to be listening for, the 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 ideas, the trade opportunities, the things that you're yelling at me. I'm not going to respond to. I find that impulses yell, real experience and intuition whispers. Uh, so double distribution, we're in the lower distribution. This may be an interesting area for an execution, but there are a lot of them. When we are in short time frame control, every extreme, every value high, every value low, every point of control might be the one that's going to hold. So I'm going to be patient and look for structure to develop in the day time frame, which may actually cost me in trade location. But that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, Mark, great question. Would you look at the change in micro ES open interest as any significance? The micro um, is from where I see it and from what I'm thinking about what the micro is. It's retail traders. It's it's. Traders that, you know, don't have a lot of money to trade with. The bigger money is, of course, going, going to be using the, the minis because the micros are expensive. Micros are expensive to trade. So you're getting, you know, uh, lower capitalized retail traders using the, the, using the micros. I, you know, and I love the micros. I think they're, I think they're great. But your longer-term traders, the traders that are actually moving the markets, are using the minis because it's it's more cost-effective. All right, um, where what are we doing here? Let's look at crude oil now. God, I've been rambling for so long already. I'm sorry. Uh, I just love this though. Okay, um, so here we are again. Crude back in central location. Last week's high. Last week's low. Uh, looking like we're going to maybe see some continuation of the downside. We added 2100 in open interest on this push. Lower volume was just okay. Very little help in, in decision-making here from opening open interest um, and volume. Take a look at the 30. So economic woes, potential economic woes, higher rates, uh, you know, possibly the the impetus of this move to the downside yesterday. We've opened with a with a gap. We have a a, a profile that looks late spike ish. We've opened below that. We've now opened with a gap. The market is continuing to try and push to the downside. Uh, you know, we've got last week's low here. We've got this week's low here. Down here is where all the fish are. What direction is unknown, but you know if we're going to continue to push this market lower, this is an opportunity. Uh, as long as we continue to one time frame lower, I can't step in front of it, which makes it difficult for me to try and get into a, a, a directional move. But I believe the bigger fish are under the pier right here. We've got weekly kickoff low, a naked point of control, and last week's low in this area. I realize it's a big area. But this is where I will probably be focusing my activities. So here's our late spike-ish right here. Uh, we didn't close necessarily in it. 58 was where we closed, but the market was still in the process of trying to look lower. Well, I'm going to use this as a late spike. We've opened below the late spike. The probability of continuation of acceptance of lower pricing is high. Doesn't mean it has to happen. 
you know, what are we looking at as far as over, overnight inventory? We've got some short overnight inventory that is currently getting shorter into the day time frame. So the, so the short time frame shorts are getting what they're looking for. They're finding continuation. They're finding traders that are willing to continue to sell and push price lower. So they're going to hold on. They're holding on. Uh, so if our sellers back off and we start to see this market waffle, then we may get the opportunity for a move in the opposite direction. But I'm not going to step in front of this. I've done that enough of time and I know that it's a bad idea. How many times do you do you put your hand on the hot stove before you realize it's a bad idea? So the Nasdaq yesterday. Look at the look at how much better the Nasdaq held up yesterday. We had a gap down here. We didn't we didn't even get to the gap, the day session gap. It held much better than the S and P's. We lost open interest. Lost twenty one hundred yesterday. Again, we're coming into rollover, so that's certainly a a, a factor and the volume was relatively good. Take a look at the 30. Uh, here's the gap that we filled in the S&Ps. We traded all the way down into this range in the S&Ps. We couldn't even get down here to fill the gap. Interesting. Short time frame traders. No overnight inventory, really close to settlement, very close to where we finished the day yesterday. No change in the perception of value. Why? Our longer time frame traders are working on getting a cheap rollover. If you don't know what rollover is, rollover is when the, the March contract is nearing its expiration. Well, all of those positions that traders want to keep, they're going to have to roll those positions from March into June. And to, to do so, it takes purchasing of one month and selling another or vice versa. You can make money on the rollover if you do it right. You can certainly lose money on your rollover as well. So that takes the focus of the longer time frame big traders that have big positions to move into the next month, puts their focus on making sure they at least get a cheap rollover, if not profit on the rollover. So now we've got short time frame traders picking each other's pockets, and it looks like that's what happened all night last night. Here's the TPO chart. Very narrow range, wide Wide, pro, wide profile. We didn't go anywhere last night. The perception of value remains the same. As a matter of fact, yesterday we had a double distribution trend day in the S&Ps. We just had a normal variation trend day. Actually, a normal variation neutral. The point of control is up here. The, deep, the volume point of control is here. Centrally located point of control. This wasn't a huge event yesterday. That's what the profiles are telling me. Now, we had excess at the high, low excess at the low. We've checked the low. We're not, it doesn't seem we're going anywhere. Patience. This is what this is telling me. As, as eager as I am to, to trade and to make some money, it's, this is telling me patience. Here's the gold. Uh, it's facing rollover. We're coming into rollover in gold. I'm starting to see... More and more volume in the June contract. We always have to skip a couple of contracts in, in gold because they're, they're kind of bastard contracts. and Nobody really trades them. They're there probably more for producers and users. Uh, so we added 17,000 contracts yesterday on this push to the downside. We... Added those contracts in the June contract. We added 22,000 in the June contract. We lost 5,000 in the April contract, a function of rollover. Volume was pretty good on this push to the downside. We, the, the fact that we added 22,000 uh, in the June contract, adding 17 overall, is encouraging for a healthy downside auction. We've got to get through last week's low for that to be truly in the in the in the 
in the in t- intact, if you will, in part of the plan. Well, we've tested relatively close to it so far today. Um, the last week's low, I'm looking at that as a pivotal level. Uh, so here's that last week's low. Here's our move to the downside. What are we looking at here? We've got uh, 1700 Right here is where we opened. Right here is where we are now. There's no overnight inventory. We've already closed the gap. Are we getting a little too cheap here is really the kind of question that I'm asking myself. If we re-accept inside value, that's a big value area special situation play. We've opened outside of range and value. We've almost traded to the value area low from yesterday. I want to put the TPO chart up here and discuss the value area special situation play. So this is the volume value low where this blue comes in. We've got TPO value at the low of the session. So if we're looking at TPO, we we know we opened out of range and out of value. If we start to show signs of acceptance inside value from yesterday, after opening outside of the range and then accepting value, there's a it puts a kind of a good probability of the value area special situation play coming into play, opening out of range, reaccepting inside previous day's balance value, increases the probability of an upside move that could reach the upper area of value at some point during that session. Doesn't not going to happen right away. It's not going to happen in our time. It's going to happen. In the market's time. So I'm going to be watching. If we spend a lot of time inside value, probably going to be focusing more on volume value because it's a little bit of a deeper acceptance that might turn me to looking for opportunities to buy weakness. But we have to see evidence of acceptance. What the heck does that mean? Well, it's extremely subjective when we first when i first learned about this we called it the 80 percent play i think it's more like a 65 percent play but we used to need two 30 minute bars to close back inside the previous day's area of value to to begin to believe that acceptance of value is in play don't see it here yet we could we're coming in we're coming out we're coming in we're coming out more often we get up in there into value, um, the more likely I think it is the the acceptance is. But it's one of the mysteries of trading is we never really know what true acceptance is until usually it's too late. Uh, this can be a chop fest trying to get into a value area special situation play. So just be careful if we do see if you do notice volume or momentum, accepting value from yesterday, look to buy a pullback where you can manage your risk. What are you doing? Lazy. All right. Uh, Lacey is just licking my hand here. I don't know what she's doing. Um, let's take a look at the euro. And then I want to get everybody down to business. I've yammered too long. So we had a a potential rising triangle. We had a potential symmetrical triangle. We've broken both of those and we've fallen into an area of, of horizontal balance. The horizontal balance is really held with weekly kickoff low and last week's low on the low end. We are at, we are at that extreme. But currencies roll tomorrow. We'll be rolling to the June contract probably tomorrow, if not on Friday. We'll watch the volume, let it let you know when we would be moving. But we lost open interest on this move to the downside. Again, that could be a function of rollover. Volume was good, also could be a function of rollover. So it's difficult to use volume and open interest to look at this as any kind of major breakout to the downside because it could just be a function of rollover. So we got the weekly kickoff in play, last week's low in play. Those extremes will be important for me in anything that I'm looking to do today in the euro. We're at those levels. There's probably some fish here 
unless this whole area becomes magnetic, which does happen, but at least it gives us the opportunity to limit risk. We've opened below range. We've opened below value. Value area special situation play does fit here. We've got to re-accept inside value, and then we can look to see at some point during this session price reach out and re get to the other extreme of value. Uh, take a look at the 10 year now. So we had our reversal in a, um, session here last week. It's still intact. We haven't taken it out. We haven't really changed market state either. We're still putting in lower lows. Now we've put in a, a higher low and we're working on a higher high here. How does that work? Rates are going to be going higher. We added 5,700 in open interest yesterday. Not a very big number. It seems to make sense with the kind of dojis we've been seeing for the last couple of sessions. Weekly kickoff low is, is, is going to be, of course, pivotal for us as well as last week's low. Take a look at the 30. Uh, um, so, well, overnight inventory was flattish. We had the 750 numbers. Uh, um, is the market telling us that this is probably that these that this ADP number is not going to affect rates? That it's not going to affect any decisions from from the Fed here? Uh, volume was. Whoops. Let me see something here. Yeah, volume was good. Open interest somewhat inert. We, we, let's take a look at this. So finally, we have a day that has excess on both sides yesterday. We've opened inside range and inside value. I'm going to stay patient and see if the uh, initial balance extremes offer any kind of opportunity where yesterday we had the IB extreme high um, IB extreme gold. I think almost all these markets had one initial balance extreme yesterday. It's been kind of hard to see. It's been hard to, for that to happen. But yesterday, the IB high, we're still in the initial balance here. We're still in range and value. I'm going to tell you, all I can say is patience. I mean, look at where we are here. We've been here. Four days now, lower extreme, upper extreme, in the middle. Don't let your impulses take over. Don't let your impulses take over. Here's the natural gas. We added 3,600 in open interest off the weekly kickoff low. We do have a late spike here. Here's the 30 minute. This late spike is showing signs of rejection. Remember, if we have a late spike, we'll look at this on the TPO chart. Nice look down to weekly kickoff low. Last week's low, rejected. Island we've got going here a little bit here. We gap down to it. If we were to gap higher tomorrow, might be kind of an island low. Here's the TPO chart. Hey. It happens. So here's our late spike from yesterday. It's a normal variation day. IB extreme, a high or low? No. Uh, normal variation day with a late spike at the end. We've opened below the base of the late spike. It's rejecting higher pricing for now. We'll be thinking about if I were going to be trading this nasty market of, of looking for opportunities to sell strength. Anyways, um, that's 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 the context we've got for these markets, and uh, want to let everybody you know get some time here. Let's take our deep breath. Stay humble, grateful, creative, and centered in your trading. 
Trade ideas that yell at you are impulses. Trade ideas that whisper to you may be starting to develop some sort of intuition. Intuition takes time. I think after 30 years, I'm starting to get a little bit of intuition. Scary. <laughs> Have a great session. Looking forward to seeing you for Make Code Money and uh, group coaching and the prep, uh, the, uh, the uh, reflection at the end of the day. Have a great day. Great day, everyone. Trade well.